Welcome to the fifth edition of the Press Preps Roundtable. I am Tony Mealy, joined by Scott Springer and Nick Dudukovic. And today we're discussing the Mount Notre Dame basketball team. Um, as you guys may have seen, MND lost last week after winning four straight state titles. They have now failed to get out of sectionals for two straight years. And I, I think it's a little disheartening to see what happened to this program you know, in recent years. You look at last year, they were spread kind of thin with what they had coming back. Um, the, rest, the rest player, Catherine Reynolds, went down with a season-ending ACL injury in December of last season. And you know, any hope of winning a state title pretty much ended you know, when she went down. And then we see what happened in, in the offseason last year. Dante Harlan and MND, they part ways. MND had seven or eight girls transfer out of MND and transfer to schools around the city. And, you know, Catherine Reynolds, Avery Larkin, they were kind of the last remnants of those state title teams. And, you know, once again, MND has a losing season. They don't get past sectionals. What do you guys just make of what, what's happened in this program in the last couple of years? It's just kind of, you know, I feel kind of bad. And I, I was at the uh, MND's win over Milford in the first round of the sectionals and watching Catherine Reynolds, and she's just such a tremendous athlete. You know, Iowa's getting a great basketball player. Uh, and it's just, it was just kind of sad to see that, you know, what, what, what has happened to that program considering what they, what they have done for the past few years. Well, who's the winner here? I mean, uh, Gaffney goes to Fairfield and, and uh, they're gone and, and uh, Dante Harlan's Withrow team is, is gone. And in the end, had everybody stuck together, um, it makes for a nicer story. But it, right now, it's, it's, it's a very tragic story. And, and uh, do you go to school for a coach? Do you go because it's the school? And there's differing opinions on that. And see, and that's the thing. I mean, Gaffney goes to Fairfield. Carleen Daniels, uh, she left MD and went to Fairfield. They were the one-two scorers on their team for Fairfield. But, I mean, they're out. I mean, Gaffney led the GMC in scoring, which is great. She's a great player. And then you look at Michelle Williams, Brianna Rucker. They go to Princeton. Princeton was going to be good regardless of those two players came. But the fact that they joined Princeton, Princeton is just an insane team. They won every game this year except for one, I think, by double digits. I mean, if, if MND had a healthy Reynolds and they had Rayshawn Gaffney and Brianna Rucker and Michelle Williams, they're a legit team you know, to contend for a regional title, maybe even a state title. You know, I, we don't know the reasoning why these kids transfer. Sure. I mean, we don't know that, but, you know, I, you kind of have to wonder what the psyche of the high school athlete is now. I mean, what's your motivation for playing high school sports? Is it to get noticed to go to college? Because it seems like, you know, you play AAU now if, you want, if, that's, if that's the route you want to take. You look at uh, a team, an Aiken boys team that loses Aaron Thomas to Withrow, that loses to Shane Bahannon. Uh, Aaron Thomas going to Florida State, Shane Bahannon going to uh, Louisville. Um, this happens at a lot of places where a school was good and then suddenly a couple players walk and yeah, they're down the toilet in a yeah. hurry. And to be fair, we don't know the exact reason why those girls left. All we know is that the coach left and then we had seven or eight girls leave. So when that happens, it, it's a little suspect what happened. And you know, my only thing is, you know, this isn't the NBA. You're not LeBron James and Dwayne Wade. This isn't like a, a super team you're trying to create. This is high school girls basketball. I mean, go to a school, stay at that school, play for that school, and graduate. If you're good enough, you'll get noticed. If you're good enough, you'll win a state title or come close. So I, it's just a little disheartening to see that that's happening at the high school level. But branching out towards the other girls' teams in the area, uh, who do you guys like in the tournament right now? Well, a team we already talked about, you got to like Princeton High School. Uh, the one undefeated during the regular season. Uh, our, our, our winning game is by an average of like 22 points a game. Only one game was decided by single digits, like you said, Tony, and that was the Mason. And they just seem like, uh, you know, they're going to be... If I had a call right now, I'd say, get ready, we're going to see them in the state. Well, how do you not like Indian Hill? they got Nicole Bell, Kelsey Matthews. They're traditionally great. Uh, I, I like Sycamore. Uh, I've done a story on Chloe Pavlich. I, I talked to Paula Hayden. Uh, Paula Hayden uh, knew, knew about Pete Maravich and LSU because Paula Hayden played there. So personally, I'm a Pete Maravich fan. I like LSU, and uh, I'm going to pull for Sycamore based on uh, Paula. It was a neat interview. Yeah, for Division One, you kind of have to like Princeton. They haven't lost yet. But one team to keep your eye on, I would say, is Ursuline. Desiree Ball, they, she graduated last year. She now plays for St. Louis University. But they still have two really good players in Ellie Griner and Morgan Donovan. So uh, they're, they're still alive in the tournament. I mean, they're probably not going to win the region. Uh, but I think they're, they're a team to keep an eye on as we go forward in the next couple weeks. It used to be a tough St. Ursula team to move on. To, yeah, so. there you go. Well, that's all we had for you this time. Uh, as always, let us know what we got right, what we got wrong, and how we can do better next time. Thank you.